Hey everybody, Scout Crafter here. Uh, I want to do a little talk about uh, milling something when using the milling machine. If you wanted to take a, uh, what we use a milling machine basically is to uh, take the surface of an area and uh, we could do all kinds of operations with a flat stock. Anything round stock as you would do in a lathe. Um, with this uh, mill that we're going to talk about now, if I wanted to take some of the stock, remove some of the stock from this area here, now, typically, you could use an end mill. This is an end mill. And you can make a lot of passes back and forth, but that sometimes doesn't leave the most desired finish. But it's a little bit quicker uh, in stock removal. Now, there's different ways you can mount the end mill. You could use it uh, just like this in a collet, or you can use an end mill holder, which is made basically to hold the end mills, and that goes into your milling machine. Um, then they came out with something called a fly cutter years ago and and what basically that is it's a a device that fits into the mill and it, it puts a uh, piece of high-speed steel stock here and this comes around and swipes like this and it'll keep swiping every pass and take a little bit off it will leave a kind of a swirled finish when you have on here uh, depending on your machine uh, how big your machine is or what kind of depth of cut you're taking uh, the finish could be somewhat less than desirable and it, it puts a lot of banging on the machine if you ever seen them used they go bang 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 because it's only cutting on every stroke so uh, years back when uh, during the CNC era they came out with something called a shell cutter and what a shell cutter is is basically it looks like this it's a uh, two-piece item uh, this is your your mandrel that goes into the machine this is a Morse taper uh, this is the number three that goes into my machine and how this fits on here is this goes into here like this and you can mount your shell cutter they have two bit three bit four bit five bit and these are called indexable cutters here because you can turn them and, and get another cutting edge uh, basically they screw in one screw this one here uses two screws as you can see it's uh, this one has a round edge cutting and um, now actually uh, the reason I got these is because I've always seen these being used on everybody's uh, channel and I want to check them out so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take a piece of Delrin because you never try anything new on on steel or aluminum first so if not if you have any Delrin so I'm gonna take this I'm gonna try this out on the mill and see what it what happens so let's go take a okay look. let's start off with uh, the fly cutter here and I'll give you an example. You can see that's uh, moving. I'm gonna give you an example of how the fly cutter works and we'll compare that to the fit and finish, or the finish of the other one. So the first thing we do is we speed it up. We'll drop it down until we make contact with the piece. And it's going very slow here. So we make contact. We're starting to tear off the edges there. Okay, now we're making contact, locking it in, and I'm going to feed it through. I'm going to speed it up a little bit, and let's feed it through. Now, a fly cutter, just by the nature of the design, takes a quite a wide cut. You can see the shavings coming off. We're doing very nice here. I'm going to feed it through. I'm not trying to get a fantastic... Uh, finish I'm just feeding it through nice and steady and fly cutter is doing an excellent job nice sharp cutter in there and when we get through we'll take a look at what the finish looks like with a fly cutter as compared to the shell cutters okay now we're just coming through the other side we're slowing it down a little bit because you do get a little bit of shadow as you get into the edges as it's coming around okay we're gonna we're gonna continue to feed through all the way through so that if there is a secondary cut that it doesn't look different okay okay let's come back and take a look at what that looks like okay this was the flood this was basically what it looked like before with the saw cuts after the fly cutter and this is what it looks like uh, just goes to show you the, the beautiful machining properties of Delrin, how nice it is. But you can see how uh, how beautiful that finish is. But that's a fly cutter, and we'll compare that. You'll see it later on to the shell. Okay, we're here now with the milling machine. The uh, shell cutter has been mounted. Uh, this is the draw bar up here, which gets tightened down. That brings uh, that makes sure that it's a draw bar cover. So there's that bolt that runs through here, 
into the Morse taper and then this shell cutter is, is mounted onto there. You could see the piece of Delrin's mounted into the vise. The finisher on here is obviously from the cut where they cut it with maybe a saw, you know, probably a circular saw of some sort. And uh, now we're going to feed it in slowly and uh, see what happens. Okay, now again, I've never used one of these before, so this is going to be a first time for both of us. We're going to turn on the, uh, the machine. We're going to lower the feed into here so we're taking off a few thousand. Then we're going to run it, run the uh, carriage across and see what happens. So we'll start off at a pretty good clip. Slowly lower the feed into the, uh, into the work until it touches lightly. And when it does, like it is there, we'll lock the lock it down and we'll feed it through and see what it looks like. Now, because it's such a light cut, I'm going to speed up the, the feed a little bit. And obviously, this uh, very light cut seems to be taking it very easily. Soft heads now. We just heard the second, the back head engage. And uh, we're going to run this pretty much the finish from the other side. You can see it's looking very nice, very shiny. You can see it from there. We'll run this all the way through. And then we'll, uh, we'll shut the machine off and see how the finish came out. Okay, let's take a look at the finish. Okay, now that was with this uh, that was with this cutter here, the four cut. And you can see this has a, a square type of uh, of insert. These are the inserts here. Uh, they come, let's see, about ten to a pack. Um, this is the finish that came off that. Uh, outstanding. Now remember, this is the finish. This is the sword finish or the cut finish, and. We're going to try this side with the uh, round one to see the comparison, but this is the finish right off the, it's just beautiful. And uh, with a shell mill, with a mini mill. So we're going to try now this one here, the round one, and see what that does. Okay, this is the round cut ahead. We're going to try the same thing. Feed it in. See, we're getting a few thousand here. And let me back it out a little bit, so... See what this does. I'll just touch it. Okay, we're touched down and we're going to feed it through. Now, I don't know the squareness of this block, whether or not it'll even hit all surfaces, but here we are. You can see we're taking a few thousands. It's going very, very easy. We have a moderate speed. I'm going to pick up the speed, as a matter of fact, a little bit. Um, just to see what the finish would be like. We don't even know if we're contacting on all sides. We just might be taking some of the saw cuts off here. But another effortless pass. Again, this is Delwyn, you know, very easily machined. Uh, when we get through, we'll take a look at what this looks like. Okay, here's the finish that we just did with the round cutters. As you can see, beautiful finish. We didn't quite get the edge here because the cutter isn't wide enough. And uh, as you can see, remember what it looked like before. And here's the other cutter, the comparison. Uh, beautiful, both, both cutters did a beautiful job. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take off this top piece. We're gonna try and take a little bit a heavier cut and see what happens. Okay, we have the block uh, sitting on its edge here. We're gonna try and take a little deeper cut with this round one. We're gonna start off slow, feed it down till we're just taking a few thousand. That's quite a bit heavier cut. Speed it up a little bit. And then we'll start feeding and see what happens. I'm going to stop this cut. Uh, well, we'll see the last one to see what it looks like. How much of a cut we're actually taking. Okay, we're Okay, that's about a sixteenth of an inch, I guess. Looks good. Let's take a little deeper cut. And then when we get to the other side, we'll see. Come down another sixteenth. Okay. I'm going to speed up the off a little bit. Oh, very good. Okay, now 
came into the old cut, so we're taking a little bit more. I don't even notice it. It's nice when everything's brand new and sharp and running the way it should. Now we're getting a little bit of shadow as we come off the edge. That's okay. We're going to follow through, get the entire cut out, and shut it off and check out the surface. Okay, so this is the last cut we did, and you can see where we backed up, there's a little cross hatching, but other than that, it's very smooth surface, just like the others. Uh, we did get a little bit of a rollover on the edge, which is, uh, you know, it happens with Delrin. All we're going to do is we're going to bevel that off, and then uh, we're going to give it a try on aluminum. So if you want to see that, uh, just let us know, and uh, we'll make it on another video. Okay, take care. I hope this helps for you guys with small mills that uh, don't know if you can put a clamshell mill in, but you can. Anyway, take care. Have a good one.